they get these rains, and the rains just pack the soil. This is Jerry Warnick. So hard that it ruins their garden. He and his wife, Linda Warnick, were able to establish property off-grid, self-sustaining, in the middle of northern Montana. Thirty-five years ago, my wife Linda and I wanted to begin a sustainable country home. We liked the Rocky Mountains, and so we chose that area. We looked around at, to find a secluded valley that uh, a lot of people hadn't already farmed in because we wanted virgin ground. So we started here in northwestern Montana. Our purpose was to have a home that used all of the natural resources that came from the Creator to begin with, to work in harmony with nature rather than trying to overpower nature. That's right, what you saw was completely real. So apricots, figs, other fruits growing in the middle of northern Montana. For those that don't know, northern Montana has about six to seven months of winter. That means you have six to seven months where you're not actually seeing the ground due to all the snow. And we were there actually about a month ago. And let me tell you, even in July and August, it's cold at night. Like really cold. Like I didn't want to get up to use the bathroom cold. Maybe, I, maybe that's a little too personal. Maybe I shouldn't have shared that. But it happened. It's cold, man. So how was Jerry and Linda able to do it? Well, today let's find out. I'm Dr. R, and this is Worth Saying. And then we started rebuilding everything in here with concrete and stone. And I Linda see. laid all this stone. Virtually wow. wow. Yeah. I can't ever remember which side. So we had an outside garden, a lot of things frosted off. Because of that, we started building greenhouses as well. We ended up with four different climates, really. This is one. This is our year-round greenhouse. Um, and we learned very quickly that if you don't have a lot of thermal mass in a building like this, it overheats during the day and gets really cold at night. Thermal mass. So I've heard of this concept before, but I've never paid much attention to it until I actually saw what it could do in action. So how does it work exactly? Well, to understand it practically, if you were to walk into your garage right now, you'd find that it's significantly cooler than the rest of your house. And I wondered about that too. I was like, I wonder why is it so cool in my garage as opposed to my living room? Well, the reason is if your garage is made like most garages in America, you'd find that the floor is basically a giant slab of concrete. Now this concrete is the thermal mass. And what it does is whatever heat is in the room, it'll actually absorb that heat and store that heat. So in general, as far as Northern Montana goes and these greenhouses, this is how it works with the sun. Heat, particularly from the sun, warms the room. That heat then transfers into the concrete or anything that has thermal mass, in this case, he used a lot of stone. That thermal mass will store that heat within itself. And once the temperatures become cooler, particularly when it's night, it will give off that heat, thus maintaining the temperatures within the room. That's the way the temperatures in this room have a 10 degree differential between the outside temperatures and the inside. In other words, when it's cold outside, it'll be 10 degrees hotter inside this room. However, when it's hot outside, it'll be 10 degrees cooler than this room. But that's great when the sun is actually out, but what happens in the winter time? How do they maintain their heat in the winter time? Well, that's a very good question. And then you just, this is just a, you can buy these for 40 bucks. They're just a barrel stove kit. And this is the, the legs and everything you just throw away. And that's that. Underneath this greenhouse in particular, they have a wood stove. With an 8 inch well facing, you can see it coming out there. Because heat rises, and because the piping in this building is a setup so that uh, heat can flow through them, when you start the wood stove once a day, you can actually maintain that heat, the needed heat to keep these plants going throughout that whole day. This is very useful, especially if you're off grid and you want to be self sustaining and you don't want to use too much energy to maintain temperatures. So this can actually be applied in your own home, if you were to design your own home, which the Wernicks did. 
which was amazing. I should also mention that there are pools of water in this greenhouse. These pools of water actually act as thermal mass as well, helping to moderate and keep the temperatures at an even level. Amazingly, these pools of water actually come from three springs on the property that are gravity fed into the whole system. So there you have it. That's how it works. The Wernicks were gracious enough to let us visit their property and give us a tour. Now the whole thing was about five or six hours and I recorded much of that. Um, so I'm not going to post everything here. However, if you'd like to watch the part about the solarium itself, this greenhouse that I've discussed on this episode, uh, please click that one up there and to view the whole thing. So what do you think? Do you think it's a pretty cool concept, this whole thermal mass? Do you think it's pretty interesting to be self-sustaining? Leave me a comment below, like or subscribe if you like this content. I may do another video on hydroelectric uh, energy. Uh, that's basically how they run their whole property. And I think that's quite amazing and incredible. Thanks for watching. I leave you with clips of their beautiful property and some of those great plants that were able to grow. Until the next video, I'm Dr. R and this is Worth Saying.